Have you ever wondered what happens if you accidentally drill a hole in your boat under the waterline? I can tell you. I have bought a new speed and depth instrument and I lifted the boat to replace the transducer and then the cables from the old transducer went through the keelson. So I thought I should put them under all the kitchen cabinets and I measured and I planned and I did some marks where I thought it would be a good thing to do the drill the holes. The cable came, came out from the wall into the forepeak and I wanted it to go down under the floor as soon as possible to prevent it from chafe. And the inner lining, it is a small distance between it and the hull. And I tried to measure that distance with my fingers. And I marked where I thought it would be perfect to put down the cable. So I started drilling. It was, you know, that typical situation where things go wrong. I had been working hard all day and uh, now it was getting late. I was getting tired and I said to myself, okay, I'm just going to drill these holes and then I'm going to have dinner. The floor is 10 millimeter thick. So it takes a while for the drill to come through and I, I, I did notice that it took unexpectedly a long time but it, I was a little too tired maybe to let that realization totally sink into my conscious mind. All of a sudden the feeling in the drill changed so I pulled it up and water started to flow in and I immediately put the finger down in the hole and my first thought was can't I just rewind the time? Just a minute, please. <laughs> and then my second thought, because even though I saw that there was no more water coming up through the floor, I heard the sound of the water pouring in. So then I realized that the distance between the floor and the hull, well, of course, my finger does not reach down all the way to prevent water coming in through the hull. So, and then my third thought, what can I reach from here to replace my finger with? So I took a kitchen towel. I could at least stop the water as much so I could run away and, and find a wooden plug and a hammer. And I hammered in with all my force. And, and then it went through both the floor and into the hole in the hull. So then I could take a deep breath and then I called my son and I said, you well? <laughs> Where are you? And my son, he's a sailor. He has been out on his own long sailing trip and he has been working hard with his boat to renovate it, to renovate the deck. So he has his boat on the same pontoon as I and when he answered he said, well I'm on the bus, I'm on my way to the boat. And I said, oh you will, I have a problem. <laughs> Can you please come to my boat? <laughs> And when he arrived, the situation transformed from this panicking disaster as I had felt when I was alone in my boat. And then it was like more a creative adventure. So we started to think and plan how could we do this as good as possible because I needed it to be properly fixed because I did not have time to lift the boat again. I had sailing courses planned for two days later and we needed to find a solution to make a watertight cover on the outside so the hole could be dried out because if we would fill it with epoxy it wouldn't stick if it would be damp. And this is what we did. In the US boat, which is filled with lots of things that is good to have. We found a slightly bowl shaped washer and then we put a bolt and a nut through the hole, tied a very thin and strong string in the bolt and then butyl rubber in a ring in the outer edge of the washer and also both on the inside and the outside everywhere around the bolt and the nut. And then a steel wire attached to the string so it could be put up through the hole. We also made a pulley because we thought when 
when we get this string through the hull, we need to pull it very, very hard to make it watertight. So we made this pulley out of a piece of wood and two blocks and a rope. And then my son volunteered to jump into the water and uh, I was on the inside. I banka ner den sin helvete. It turned out to be very tricky to get the, the wooden plug out because I had been hammering it down with such panicking force. So it just came out in pieces while you will was freezing in the water. fått upp alltihopa. Och jag känner ståltråden. Du, nu gick snart av. Så så där hårt kan man inte dra. Ja, men det, är, det, är, det är en bra bit kvar här så jag gör en ny ögla. Ja, den har inte flugit ut. Nej. Men det gick av, det var inte knutet som gick upp alltså. Nej, det gick av. Öglan är kvar här. It seemed like no water came in. So we dried the hole with kitchen paper first. And then the whole night I went there from time to time. And, and blowed my hair dryer down in a hole to dry it out. And then the next day Joel came back with all his plastic equipment and he made this epoxy filling. And tell me Joel, how did you think when you filled this kind of tricky double hole with epoxy? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so first of all we filled the, the actual hole uh, through the hull with just regular epoxy. But since the hole was vertical and the hull is sort of diagonal, you have the situation where you only you can only fill to the lowest part of the hole, of course. Then it will start overflowing. So we thought to add some thickened epoxy on top of that, just so that all of the damage in the the hull is filled with some epoxy, so we don't have thinner areas in the hull and thicker areas. And uh, while we were doing that, we also filled all the way up to uh, to the floor level, just to repair uh, the hole in the in the floor. Even though that was mostly cosmetic, because the the floor inside is not uh, structural. And about a month later, I lifted the boat again to clean it from barnacles, and uh, then I got a chance to see the reparation from outside. And uh, the guy that lifted the boat came and pointed at it and said, "What is that?" <laughs> 